Or email it or Monday at the latest, okay? I don't have the test, but I have the test. They have learned, right? So I don't get my few ones. So here's my test. I think I have extra here. Okay. So what lessons from you? Yeah. Just give it all to me. Unless it's from the other, unless it's what, and we didn't have homework the other day. We didn't. Like 16, 16, 16, 16, 16, 16. I think, I think I was going to say,
And then we did what? Factored the first term. We factored the first term. I'll put in parentheses, that was x squared. And then what did we do? We had to determine our signs. And then what did I do, Betsy? Uh, make a list of factors. Make a list of factors. Make a list of factors of C term. And figure out which pair adds to equal B term. Okay, so we said, hey, I list my factors. This times this equals C. But now when I add them together, which one's equal B? Okay, and then place factors. And um, correct parentheses. And then step six was check by using what? Foil. Okay. So step one, we drew our parentheses. Step two, we factored out that x term. Step three, we determined, okay, what are our signs going to be? Is it going to be a positive and positive, negative and negative, or is it positive, negative? Okay, and so we had our whole list about, I look at the second sign to determine that. So I look at this sign to determine, are they I look at this side to determine, okay, if they're the same, are they positive or negative? But if this one says they're gonna, my sign of my larger is gonna be this, okay? So that's when I determine signs. That's all the things I'm doing in that step. Then I make my list of my factors of C and I have to make sure to pay attention to that sign in front of C. If it's negative, I know one's gonna be positive, one's gonna be negative. This one tells me, is it my larger or my smaller? And then um, figure out which ones add together to equal B. Then based on what those numbers are, I put them in the appropriate set of parentheses and then I can always check by foiling, okay? So now what we're gonna do is we are going to look at, so we're gonna practice that a little bit before we go too far. Let's go ahead and open up to page 158. Well, I guess a lot. Because activities five on page 158 is just factoring perfect square trinomials. Let's go ahead and do this. Let's go ahead and open up to page five. Page five. <laughs> page 158, activities five. Page 158, activities five. Okay. 158, activities five. Okay. Some of you have already started these, but remember, so these were perfect square trinomials. Um, so both of them basically for the first one, x squared plus 24x plus 144, we would have x plus 12 times x plus 12, and I can just write that as x plus 12 in parentheses and put the, my exponent of 2 next to it to make it a shortened way. Um, all right, since we don't actually have any practice, let's go ahead and start lesson 72. All right, so now we've had factoring common monomials. We've had factoring the difference of two squares. We've had tri factoring trinomials of x squared plus bx plus c. Today, we are going to work on factoring trinomials in the form of ax squared plus bx plus c. How are these two things different? There's I have added an A here. So what does that mean? I'm gonna have in front of my X squared term that I didn't have here. A number, yeah. Here, what was my understood number? A one, do I need to write the one? Mm -mm. Here, this means it's gonna be anything greater than one. Okay, it could be a two, it could be a 200. But anyway, it could, it's gonna be a number that's greater than one, okay? So if we look at, 
Lesson 72, page 159, it says, in this lesson, you will factor trinomials similar to those in the previous lesson, except that the first term will have a coefficient other than one. These trinomials are in the form of ax squared plus bx plus c. To factor these trinomials, follow these steps. Okay, so we're gonna have some steps that are similar, some that are different. Obviously, you can see in the orange that you go, oh my gosh, I've got these weird boxes. What in the whole wide world is this? Let me just tell you, these boxes here. Welcome. Yay, Micah, miss you so much. Hello, come in, come in. We are on page 159. Okay, so we're gonna work through on how to use these boxes. And I will tell you that using the box method is something that I was not taught. And that's why factoring was such a mystery to me, okay? Using the boxes breaks it down step by step and it helps tremendously. Yes, it's gonna take some writing. Yes, it's gonna take some effort, but I promise you using the boxes, you're gonna find it to be super helpful. All right, so the first thing that I always want to do whenever I'm factoring trinomials in this form, okay? We're gonna go through our list of what I want to do. The first thing that I want to do is I want to see if a common monomial can be factored out. So the first thing I want to do is back to what we learned over here. I want to look and see, is there a number that will divide evenly into my A, B, and C terms? Because if there is, that's the first thing I need to do because I need to simplify it before I get ready to factor, okay? We'll look at this. There will be some, um, there will be, a, we'll, we'll look at a couple of them and you'll, you'll understand what I'm talking about in just a minute, okay? So just don't stress if you don't know, well, I don't know what that means. We'll work on it, okay? So the first thing is I want to see if there's a common monomial that can be factored out, okay? Step two is to draw boxes, okay? And now we're gonna talk about what are in my boxes. My box is gonna be a four grid. So basically I got two on top, two on the bottom. And notice that whatever my AX squared goes in my first box. Is everybody comfortable with that? My C goes in my last box. Those are my two easies, okay? Now, these two boxes here, first of all, when I tell you what we put in there, it's not any magic about which one goes in this box or this box. Either one is gonna go, but where did I do to determine what goes in here? Comes back to step four here when we made our list of factors, okay? So this is the same step four here. Once I've done my boxes, I determine which factor of AC goes here. And AC is gonna be a little bit different. And factor of AC. So one factor of AC times X other factor of AC times X. Right now, this is gonna make no sense. Just go with me, okay? So we draw our boxes. When I draw my boxes, my easiest things are to do this right here, okay? Now, one of the things that I've got to look at, factors of AC. When I have two variables side by side without a sign in between them, what operation do I understand is going on there? Multiplication. Multiplication. So when I say factors of AC, this is A times C, okay? So AC is gonna be A times C. So I'm looking for um, factors of A times C that equal B, okay? Like I said, we'll break that down in just a minute. Step three is I'm going to let's see, factor each row and factor each column. And we're going to talk about that in just a minute. 
All I'm doing is divide out a common monomial. Okay. Step four is to combine factors into two sets of parentheses. But pay attention to signs. Step five is to check by using oil. Okay. These are going to be our steps. And the example we've got is 4x squared minus 2x minus 12. Okay, this is the example that we've got in the orange box. So what do we say step one is? See if a common monomial can be factored out. Okay, I have a four, a two, and a 12. Is there any number that I know will divide evenly into all of those numbers? Two. A two, right? So I'm gonna write my two just like we did when we were factoring common monomials. Now, in parentheses, what is 4x squared divided by 2? 2x squared. What is negative 2x divided by 2? What's 2 divided by 2? 1. One. So it's going to be negative x. What is negative 12 divided by 2? Negative 6. So that was step 1. We factored out our common monomial. Everybody good with that? Okay. So I'll put a little one here so you know that was step one. Step two is I need to draw my boxes. Okay. Everybody freeze them now. Why does it jump from 68 to 673? Okay. So now I'm going to draw my boxes. I'll draw my box. What do I know goes in this first box? A X squared. Okay. So now what is AX squared? Here, 2x squared. 2x squared is my a. I can't say and write at the same time because I'm going to say what I'm. I'm going to write what I'm saying. So remember, this is ax squared plus bx plus c. Now, I started here, but because I have factored out this common monomial, now this is my new trinomial. So ax squared goes in my first box. Ax squared. Everybody good with that? What's going to go in this box? Negative six. Negative six. Good. Like I said, that's my easy part. AX squared, negative six. Those go in my boxes. Now I'm going to come over here and I'm going to make a list of A times C. What is A? Just two, right? When I look at this, I'm forgetting about the X squared. I'm just looking at my number. So AC is two times negative six. What is two times negative six? Negative 12. Negative 12. Are they with me so far? Okay. All I did was I said, okay, I know A and I know C, so now I'm going to multiply those two together. A is two, C is negative six, and two times negative six is negative 12. So now I've got to make a list of factors of negative 12. Just like we did in step four, if I have a negative number, what do I know about each of these factors? One will be what and the other will be positive and negative. How am I going to figure out which one is which? The signs. Just like we did with determining our signs, I'm going to look at this one. I know my signs are going to be opposites. My larger term will be the negative. So when I do my list of negative 12, I'm going to have one times a negative 12. And then I'm going to have two times what? Negative six. Negative six. Three times negative four. negative four. That's as far as I can go. That's all of my factors of 12. Now what do I look at? Which ones add together to equal negative one? So remember, so they're going to multiply. So factors 
of 12 and they need to add to equal negative one. They need to add to equal, I'll put B, which is negative one, okay? What is one plus negative 12? Negative 11. What is two plus negative six? What is three plus negative four? Aha, uh -huh. what are my two factors gonna be? Three and negative four. Three and negative four. So one box is going to have 3x, the other will have a 4x. It does not matter which one goes in which box. I can put 3x here, or I can put negative 4x here, okay? So I'll just go ahead and go with the first one. So I'm going to have 3x. Remember, I'm going to have the factor of AC times x. So I said my factor of AC is 3. I'm going to put it with x. What's going to go in this box? Negative 4. Negative 4x. Okay, so let's go back over that one more time. Mm -hmm. I drew my box. These are my easies. I know AX squared and I know C, so I put those in there. Mm -hmm. Then I had to say, okay, well, what is A times C? Well, A times C, two times negative six, gave me a negative 12. Now I'll need to list my factors of negative 12 and figure out which ones add together to make B, just like I did over here. We've already done that, okay? I'm doing the same thing over here. So I figured out I've got three and negative four. So that means in one box, I'm gonna have three with X. The other box, I have negative four with X, okay? So that was step three. No, it wasn't. That was all step two. Now we're gonna do step three. Step three, I need to factor each row, okay? So when I talk about rows and columns, rows go side to side columns go up and down, okay? What I like to do, again, it doesn't matter where you draw your blanks, but I'm gonna go ahead and put a blank here and here, here and here. So I draw box, I go ahead and put blanks. I've got two X squared and three X in this row. What could be factored out of both of those? One X. X. See, I can factor an X out of here and an X out of here. This is like factoring out my common monomial. That's what I'm doing here. So I've got 2X squared and 3X, so I can factor out an X right here, right? Negative 4X and negative 6. What can factor out of both of those? What kind of 2? A negative 2. And because they are both negative, so I can factor out a negative 2. Everybody kind of okay with how I did that? I said go in side to side, 2x squared and 3x. I can factor an x out of both of those. With negative 4x and negative 6, I can factor out a negative 2. The only way I can pull out a negative number is if they are both negative. In a minute, we're going to have a negative and a positive, and that's going to be a different situation. Yes? Wouldn't 2 be positive if they're both negative? I'm not multiplying them together. I'm dividing out. Okay? So I'm going to divide out. So I'm going to pull out a negative 2 because if I have negative 4x minus 6 and I pull out a negative 2, what do I have left here? I would have 2x plus 3, right? Mm -hmm. But that doesn't matter. I don't, I don't need to do that. I just want you to be able to see because, I mean, that would be what would be left. But I don't have to stress about that right now. All I'm doing is seeing what will divide evenly out of both of them. If both are negatives, the number you pull out is negative. In a minute, we're about to do positive and a negative. If they are not both negative, then I can only factor out a positive out of both of them, okay? So 2x squared and 4x, what will come out of both of those? Two. A 2 and? Uh, an X. And an X. So 2x will come out of 2x squared and negative 4x. Because remember, negative 4x divided by 2 would leave me a negative 2x, right? And then 2x divided 2x squared divided by 2x would leave me just x. So I can factor a positive out of a positive and a negative. Okay. 3x and negative 6. What will factor out of both of those? Is this number positive or negative? Positive. So I understand this will be 2x plus 3. Okay. 
So that was number three. I factored my rows and my columns. Four, I've got my sets of parentheses. Now I've got to fill them in. One set is going to be X minus two because I have X minus two here. The next one will be what? There you go. Let me tell you, when I did this, I had to sit and I had to make pairs of binomials using all of these factors to try to figure out what was what. That was why I totally gave up on factoring because I felt like it was magic to be able to figure out quickly which ones were which. Have this method. If we would have, it would have been a totally different thing. Because by breaking it down step by step, I'm able to look and break them down and say, okay, well, hey, I can factor an X out of here and a negative two of these. So that will be my first set of factors. Then two X plus three here. So step five, check by FOIA. What is X minus two? What is X times two X? Two X squared. What is X times three? What is negative two times positive two X? What is negative two times positive three? When I combine three X and negative four, I have a negative X. So I've got two X squared minus X minus six. Now to get back here, what would I have to do with this? Multiply it by the two that I pulled out, right? What's two times two X? Four. I'm sorry, four, squared. Two times two x squared is four x squared. What is two times negative x? Two, negative two x. Negative two x. And what is two times negative six? Negative four. I ended where I started. <coughs> okay. Steps in a process. If you've got these steps written out, you put them on your sheet of paper and lay it beside where you're working on your other sheet of paper. And you go, did I do step one? The hardest part to me was always, where do I start? I look at something, I go, I, I got nothing. And if I don't know how to start, I can't work the problem. That's why I want to make sure that it's, see, this is where you, can you factor out a common monomial? If you can, that's step one. If you cannot, then you just move on to step two, okay? In our last work, we're gonna, um, our novel that we work on, we can't factor out a common monomial. So we just move on, okay? We don't go, ah, I got it. No, you don't have to. You just do if you can. Okay. I will erase this right here. Anybody need it? Okay. So now we're going to go to classwork, page 159. The first one 2x squared plus 5x plus 3. Yeah. Okay. What is step one? Nope. We have a whole new set of. What is step one? Is there a common monomial that will divide out of 2x squared, 5x, and 3? No. Nope. So I move on to step two. Step two is two. Bless you. I'm going to draw my box. Which goes, what goes in the first box? Uh, what goes in my last box? Three. Good. Okay, so I've done that. Now, what do I need to find? Um, factor of two x squared. No, sorry. Um. So we'll make this two a, and this will be. We've got to find my times C. What is A? 2. Remember, it's just the number. Just the number 2. What is um, C? What is times 3? Okay, so I'm finding factors of 6. What times what is 6? 1 times 6. Okay, are they going to be positive, negative, one of each? Positive. Why? This one tells me they're going to be the same. This one tells me they'll both be positive. So I don't have to stress about signs. So I've got one times six and two times three. What do I have to make sure that these add together? Two times three. 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 Two
we need it to be five. So one plus six is seven. Two plus three is five. There are our terms. So what's gonna go in our boxes? Two and three. What's gonna be with two and three? X. Two X, three X. Okay. You good so far? Any questions? All right, so we've, we've filled up our boxes. Yes. Does it matter which? Like, no, it does not. You could put two, and actually, I'll tell you what, I'm going to rewrite this box down here and we'll look at that. And I'll have um, 2x squared. I'll put 3x here and 2x here, and then 3, and we'll do both of them just so you can see. All right. So, again, a minute ago, I had room to write on the side. Over here, I'm going to be a little squunched in, so I'm going to come over here and squunched is a room. Okay. So again, I can have a, I can put my blanks on the left or the right. I'm on the top or the bottom. It doesn't matter. The thing is, is these two are going to make one set of parentheses. We'll make another set of parentheses. What can factor out of 2x squared and 2x? 2x. What can factor out of 3x? What can factor out of 2x squared and 3x? X, what can factor X and three? Mm -hmm. The only number that will divide out of two X and three is going to be one, okay? So if there's nothing that you can say, there's nothing, it's gonna be one, okay? I'm gonna set up these. What's gonna go in one set? 2x plus 3. What's going to go in the other? Like now, let's say I had swapped them and I had 3x in this box and 2x in this one. What can factor out of 2x squared and 3x? What can factor out of 2x? What can factor out of 2x squared and 2x? What can factor out of 3x and 3? I'm still going to have 2x plus 3 and x plus 1. As long as A and C are in the right places, these two can be flip-flopped and it doesn't matter because I'm still gonna get the same thing in my parentheses. Then I can check my foiling. 2X times X, 2X squared. 2X plus one times one is 2X. Three times X is three X. Three times combined are five X. So I have two X squared plus 5x, and then it is. So I know I got everything right. Okay, so there's a system of checks and balances here that you can go through and look when you go through all of that work. I don't know about you guys, but I don't want to go through a whole bunch of work and then go, I missed it. Oh yeah, I hate when that happens. Especially when you've gone through all this work. It's not and, depressing. And when you do it, Check it. Same way, you're like, oh, I did all this wrong. That's my favorite. My favorite. Is to get a test back that I have marked that you missed it, and then you go back and do it exactly the same way, and you turn it in with the same wrong answer. Okay, I'm done. I have a full question because I couldn't figure out the answer. I'm sorry. Come see me. I will help you. Okay, if you go, I'm doing it again. And I got the same answer. Text me a picture of it. Say, what am I missing here? I will help you with that. Okay. Yeah, I will point out the little test. Wait a second, I know what I'm doing. Okay, let's look at the next one. I'm going to come over and erase over here. We'll leave. All right, remember I told you the key to learning, the key to learning is making mistakes and learning from your mistakes figuring out what you did incorrectly and changing it for the next time. Um, have y'all ever heard the definition of insanity as doing the same thing over and over and expecting to get a different result? If you do everything exactly the same over and over, over just experiment. Let's say you went into science class and the teacher says you're going to do this, 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 and this. Well, with a scientific experiment, typically if you follow the exact same steps, you should be able to replicate that process every single time you do it as long as everything else is the same, okay? So you know that if I do this, then this, then this, and this, I'm gonna get this result. And if I do it over again, this result. Do it over again, I'm gonna get the same result, or you should, okay? As long as everything's the same. So if you keep doing the wrong thing over and over and over again, you're always gonna have a wrong answer, 
Okay. So the goal is to go, hey, why did I miss what I missed? So I can fix it. Okay. Um, one of the things that I'll tell you, um, I've been trying to really work on my geometry class about it. It's the kind of thing where um, I, have, I have some students that'll go, well, I couldn't do my homework because I didn't know what to do. Well, okay. So if you don't know what to do, you just go, can't do it. <laughs> If you're at a job, okay, let's say you've got, who in here has a job? Do I have a job? Okay, if you went, if you've got a job and they say, do this, what is something one of you guys have to do at your job? Do it. Huh? But what, what specifically do you do at your job? What, where do you work? I work at this farm place. <laughs> okay, and what do you do? Like, what's one of your jobs? Box stuff. Okay, box stuff. Let's say that you're boxing stuff. Okay, and you throw things in the box. Does it does it get sh shipped somewhere? Okay, so you put things in a box, they get shipped somewhere, and the customer opens it, and they open their box, and everything is broken. It's trashed. It's squished. It's messed up. Huh? What is it? What is it? Food, like vegetables. And <laughs> okay, it is squished. Everything's bruised. Everything's just a mess. Okay, and the people go, they call up and go, I got this box, I paid for all this wonderful food, and it is trash. I can't eat it. I paid oh, for that would be steady. I'm so sorry. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, then boss comes to you and says, hey, I need you to work on packing these boxes, okay? I need you to pack it differently because we have unhappy customer because it's squished stuff, okay? So, then Sadie goes, that box and she just throws things in there and time and time and time again they're getting complaint after complaint after complaint eventually your boss is going to be pretty happy because they're out money because if they're having to refund that money or they're having to do something so if you had a job and you had money riding on it you fix what you need to do and say okay and if you're, if you're, if you don't know you say well i did what i thought was best then you say well can you show me how to do it better and the boss says sure Put the heavy things on the bottom and then put your lighter stuff on top and then that way you don't have all the weight going down so you learn a better way to do it okay so that's going to be it's not just going to be math it's not going to be algebra one and geometry and algebra two it's not just going to be that it's it, this these are real life applications no probably you're never going to be walking down the street and somebody goes if you can factor out x squared plus five x plus three i'll give you a million dollars it's not going to happen if it does i expect you to share with me okay because i taught you um, it's not going to happen, but what happens is through this process, your brain is learning, hey, this is steps in a process. I do this and this and this. I'm learning to problem solve. So then when you're in a job and something doesn't work right the first way, you figure out a way. You figure out the right way to do it. So no, no, nobody's going to ask you how to do this on the street. Like I said, <laughs> but if it does i expect my 500 grand okay <laughs> all right so our next one is 2x squared plus 3x <laughs> minus nine what is step one factor out um, except we can't so we draw a box all right well, i don't have anything that i can factor out of 2x squared plus 3x minus nine nothing called to come out to the box so i'm going to the box i draw my box <laughs> What's going in my first box? Two. 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 What's going in my last box? Negative nine. nine. Good. Hey, be sure to put those signs. If it is negative, you need to make sure to have it. If it's positive, don't worry about it. Okay? So I've got 2x squared and negative 9. Now, what do I need to find? Bless of. You. of <laughs> okay. A is 2. And negative nine, so that is negative 18. Because it's a negative, what do I know that each of my factors, one will be a what and one will be a what? Positive, positive and negative, how do I know which is which? Look at the sign. The larger will be positive. So when I have one times 18, I know my negative is going to be the smaller one because according to our rules about signs, they will be opposites, larger is positive. So when I make my list, all of my smaller ones will be the negatives, the larger is Negative positive. three times six. Okay, negative three times six. Anything else? Nine, nine and two. So I'm gonna squeeze in here with a negative two and a positive nine. Okay, that's all I've got.
What do they need to add to equal? Three. Positive or negative? Positive. Positive. So now I'm going to add negative one plus 18. I know that's not going to work. Negative two plus nine is? And negative three plus six is? Positive three. There are my factors. What am I going to have in my boxes? And what's going to be with them? X. Negative three X, positive six. Again, just because I am a little OCD sometimes and I do everything I want it to be. I just take my first one and I put it in that box in the top and I take my second one and put it in the box down there. That's just typically how I do it. And then that way it's just kind of my little method. It don't matter. Okay. All right. Blank, 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 blank. As those were not bad words. <laughs> 2x squared and negative 3x. What will factor out of each of those? X. What will factor out of 6 and negative 9? Three. And is it positive or negative? Positive. positive. Why? Because it's only negative. I only have one positive and one negative. Okay. What about two x squared and six? X. I think I'm sorry. What's it gonna be? Two. What did I forget? X squared. Oh. I forgot my x there, didn't I? Oh. That makes a difference, doesn't it? How did I catch my mistake? I was getting ready to write a two here, and I know that in this first blank, I have an X. When I set up my parentheses, I know I've got to have an X term first. So I knew immediately I had made a mistake by saying, if I do two, a two here, I'm missing something. Yeah, I noticed that. All right, so I pull out two X. Negative three X and negative nine. What can I factor out of here, Dennis? A negative three, good. It's a negative because they're negative. All right, set up my parentheses. What's going to be my first step? X plus three. X plus three. And the other one? Two X minus three. Does it matter which is which? No. No. Was that the bell? Yes. Great. Don't sound so excited.
continuing to practice with these because they take time. Um, Like being a mom, and that was always my biggest struggle. Like being a mom and being a wife and a housekeeper and trying to have a job too and just balancing it all. And I always felt like if I could handle one thing, I failed in another area. And finally, it was a kind of thing where because I, I kept telling myself I had to be perfect with everything I did, I had to be a perfect friend, I had to be a perfect wife, I had to be a perfect mom, I had to be a perfect employee, I had to do everything perfectly. And so that gets heavy. That's hard to carry. And then, I, and it took a while, but I finally realized that that's not the expectation. And, the, the expectation that's not what I and so that's why I had to finally go, I'm holding myself. I'm trying to be perfect. And the only perfect anything is not. I'm going to fail, and I'm going to struggle, and I'm going to be messy, and I'm going to hurt people, and I'm going to do things wrong. But I just, oh, you, you know, I've got to learn from that. And that's the key. going to be the same okay so no matter what when i'm looking at my signs here same signs positive if it's a negative it's opposite signs if this one is positive and this is positive they're both positive if this one is positive and this one is negative they're both negative if it's negative they're going to be opposites 
If this one's positive, then the larger is the, the um, positive. If I have a negative and this one's negative, then my larger term is negative. So those signs, understanding that rule, and again, that was something that I never, I'm probably quite guilty of being in, and like I said, I really don't have much recollection of Algebra 1. I remember Algebra 2 very clearly. And I remember, I remember clearly taking an Algebra 2 fact test and going how am I how in the world am I supposed to know what the signs are how do I know that what if it, what these are supposed to be I know one's supposed to be negative how do I know where it goes so I'd literally be sitting there and I would work out one equation that had a negative or like a negative one and a positive 18 but then I'd work it again with a positive one and a negative 18. so basically for each of these I'd be working two problems per set of factors so I'd work it with this I'd work it with this I'd work it with this so I'd be working basically six different problems just to get one for one. So it was frustrating, okay? I didn't get it. Now probably my teacher probably told me how to get it and I probably didn't pay attention. So that's why I'm here to tell you, don't do what I did, okay? It's, it's, not, it's not magic. And so the, the, the better you get it now, the easier math is gonna be for you beyond, okay? All right, so we just said we've got x plus 3 times 2x minus 3. I could check out by foiling again. If you don't want to write this step out, don't, but just at least quickly mentally check it. x times 2x is 2x squared. x times negative 3 is negative 3x. Then I've got a positive 5x. No, that would be a 6. <laughs> um, positive 6, negative 3, positive 3. 3 times negative 3, negative 9. Okay, so I don't have to list out FOIL. I don't have to write it all out. Now, if you need to and you want to, do it, okay? Because again, I don't want to do all this work and then get to the end and find out that I've messed up something and then get it wrong. I want to make sure that if I put in all that work, I want credit for it, okay? All right, let's look at, yes, ma'am. Okay, hang on just a minute. Let me get some board space and we will look at the next one. All righty, so our next problem is 2x squared plus 4x minus 16. So Zoe, what do you think we can factor out? Um, two. Two, and that's going to leave what? Uh, two. If two I have 2x squared divided by 2, what do I have left? Two x. Just no, just x squared. Okay, so remember, and also if you need to do this, okay, so two x squared divided by two is just going to leave me x squared plus four x divided by two. Four. Two four divided by two will be two, so it'll be two x and negative sixteen divided by two. Negative eight. Negative eight. Okay, so now you go. Oh, now in this one. We can either go back to the way we did it previously, or I can use the box method here too. Okay. So if I if I wanted to go ahead and set up my box, what's going to go in the first one? X squared. X squared. What's going to go in the last one? Negative eight. Negative eight. Now I've got a times c. What is a? A is one. A is one. Good. So I've got one times negative eight. Right? So I'm finding factors of negative eight. I know I'm gonna have a positive and a negative. Which one will be the larger? Uh, the, the larger one will be positive. Positive. So I'll have negative one times eight, negative two times four. What do I need them to add to equal? Negative one plus eight is seven. Negative two plus four is two. So now I see that I'm going to have negative two and four. So I'll put negative two x here or x there. I forgot I remember my x's this time. Mm -hmm. All right. So now what's going to factor out of x squared and negative two x? X. What's going to factor out of four x and negative eight? Four. What will facts out of facts? Factor out of x squared and 4x. X. What will factor out of negative 2x and negative 8? 
made it two. What are my parentheses? X plus four. Now, what I have to make sure of is when I write my answer, what can I not forget from step one? What did I do in step one? I think I forgot to emphasize this earlier. What do we factor out? Oh, you have to play so I have to make sure that in my answer, I have two times X plus four times X minus two. I have to make sure that when I have my answer, whatever I factored out in step one still gets written there. So sometimes what, you know, so it could be that when you're setting this up, you just go ahead and put that two there so you don't forget it. Okay, you go ahead and carry that two down and then set up your parentheses, okay? So again, I would FOIL this part first. X times X is X squared. X and negative two is negative two X. Four and X is four X, so that's gonna be positive two X. And X times negative two is minus two, so I've got X squared plus two X. Two, four times negative two is negative eight. And then two, once I multiply, I've got two times x squared is two x squared. Two times two x is four x and two times negative eight is negative 16. So FOIL then multiply the two out there, okay? All right, let's look at the next one. What have they thrown us a loop on now? What have they done that looks very different? Oh my, I've got an X cubed in my first term. Okay, so let's see, my problem is 4X cubed plus 16X squared plus 15X. What is step one? Two factor. I draw a common goal. Three. Now, hold on. X. <laughs> there isn't, unless you count X. X. X is a factor. Okay, I can factor out an X. So just like if, just like over here, two was part of each term here, X is part of each term over here. So if I factor out an X, what's going to be left here? Four X squared. What's going to be left here? What's going to be here? Okay, now I feel better. Now it looks like what I need it to look like, okay? I get uncomfortable when it doesn't look exactly like I need it to. So I factored out my common monomial. Now what am I going to do? Set up my box. What goes in the first box? 4X squared. 4X squared. What goes in the last box? 15. Uh-oh. A times C, what am I multiplying? Four times 15. Four times 15 is 60. Good. Have I told you how I remember my 15s? No. no. The clock. Well, what happens? Oh, the first yeah. set of 15 minutes is 15. What is the second set of 15 minutes? 30. 30. What is the third set of 15 minutes? What's the fourth set of 15 minutes? 60. So always, for some reason, 15s, I always have to think about the clock. 25s, I deal with money, quarters. 125, 2 is 50, 3 is 75, 4 is dollar. That's what I do. So think about, for some reason, 15s and 25s, I always go, ooh, I'm not 15s because, like, you know, we memorized up to usually 12. So 15s kind of stress me out. But anyway, so um, 4 times 15 is not 6, it's 60. Mm -hmm. All right, so I need factors of 60 that add together to equal 16. All right. So what am I going to do? Are they going to be positive, negative, one of each? Um, no, actually, they're both positive. Both positive, so I don't have to stress about that. So I've got 10, one times 60, two times 30, 30 three times 20, four times 15, 15 five times 12, six times 10. Or I was like six ten. Why can't we just do that? You can. If you see it, if you knew immediately it's six times ten, you do not have to list all these out. Okay. If you can see immediately that hey, six plus ten is sixteen, then I can stop there. Okay. 
Or if I, I don't have to list every single factor, I just want you to know that if you cannot do it, list every factor. So I know that I'm gonna have six X and 10 X. All the blanks, I go row by row, column by column. So what is divisible or what is my common monomial of four X squared and six X? What else? Two X, good. Four and six, I can pull out a two and X squared and X, I can pull X. What about 10 X and 15? Five. five, my largest number I can factor out of both is five. What about four X squared and 10 X? Two X again. What is about six X and 15? Three. What goes in my parentheses? And what goes before my parentheses? An X. X, and then I have two X plus five and two X plus three. And there is my answer. Okay. There are several steps involved, but none of it's really complicated. The hardest part is this right here. Remember, I've got to multiply and then I've got to figure out what they add together to equal. But all of these things are right here. Okay. Let's go ahead and look at the last one. What do you already know you can pull out of the last one? That's good. So in this last one, I've got 3x cubed minus 9x squared plus 6x. Plus 6x. So is x the only thing I can pull out? Three. 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 Yeah, I can factor out a 3x. So if I want to, I can come down here and go ahead and say, hey, I know I'm going to have 3x in front of my parentheses. All right, so I can pull out 3x. So what is 3x cubed divided by 3x? X, x what? Squared. 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 Good. Remember when I divide variables with exponents, I subtract the exponents. So 3 minus 1 is 2. Negative 9x divided by 3x. Negative 3x. Negative 3x and a positive 6x divided by 3x. Plus 2. It's just 2. Good. Positive 2. All right. Box. What goes in the first box? X squared. X squared. Last box? Two. What is A times C? Two. It's one times two, right? So two, hey, that's really difficult. I'm gonna have one times two, which is positive, which is negative? Both. So it is negative one plus negative two? Negative three, so that works. Okay, so what goes in my first box or in one of my boxes? Negative 1x. Negative 1x or just negative x. What's in my other one? Negative 2x. Okay. Row, row, column, column. What will factor out of x squared and negative x? Um, x. x. What will factor out of negative 2x and 2? Two. What will factor out of x squared and negative 2x? X. What will factor out of negative x and 2? One. One. Good. So I already put my 3x in front of my parentheses. What's going to be my first set of parentheses? X plus 2. <laughs> okay. Let's stop here for a minute. X minus squared. Okay. So what have we noticed here? Okay. When we were factoring out here, are both of these negative? No. Are both of these negative? I don't have two that are negative. So when I have a plus sign here, and I know they're both negative, I have to pay attention when I was here to know that both of these need to be negative, okay? So it's a whole lot easier when I've got one positive, one negative, because I can figure out which one's positive and which one's negative. But in my box, I am not going to have an indication here of these being negative. So when I'm writing my answers, I have to refer back up to here and make sure I've got a X minus two and X minus one. Okay, so be sure to check your signs. When I have a positive and negative, I'm going to be able to see it when I factor in my box. If they're both the same, then I just write them both the same in my answer. Okay. There we go. All right.
right. Let's go ahead and look on page 160. I want you to go ahead and start working on page 160. We have one, two, three, what, nine problems. Go ahead and get started on these. Whatever you do not finish becomes homework. Okay, these will need to be done on paper to turn in. And if you want to write it on paper, well, yeah, I want them go ahead and do them all on paper so it'll be an assignment to turn in. And then also that way you don't um, have to worry about trying to write small enough to fit it all in. So go ahead and start on page 160 on notebook paper. Um, it doesn't matter as long as you just number on each other. You want to number side to side or up and down? Side to side. Either way, just leave the problem in the number and I'll match them up. So here we have. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. What you can do is just write your answer in your book when you're done, but go ahead and work it all on paper so you can hand me the paper. If you need help, let me know. Look at your steps. Absolutely. Yeah. If you get stuck, you can talk to your neighbor and kind of talk through and go, hey, because one of the best ways to learn is to teach somebody else how to do it too. Okay. Helping others is helpful. I definitely will go, what, what did you do? I need to talk to your. That's not what I'm asking. But if you get stuck, say, hey, help me. <laughs> Hit me. <laughs> Okay, so um, how did you decide this would be five and six? What do five and six multiply? Or what did you say? Okay, all right. So, what can you factor out of two x squared and five x? Well, I'm just going side to side right now. Top row. 2x and squared and 5x, what can factor out of both of those? So the next, and we have the left. Now, 6x and 15. Mm -hmm. 
So think about your factors of six and your factors of 15. What will divide evenly and divide the best? No. And so three. Oh, okay, we're going to six and three or one to 15. Yeah. Now, top to bottom, we've got two x squared and six x. Now, put your one at the bottom. Wait, we can do that. Not here. I'm a two and a six, so it'll take care of a two and six. Two. And then whatever we'll X squared and X. Good. Two X. All right. Five X and fifteen. Three won't go into five. Five. Nope, because fifteen doesn't have X. I can only factor on next when they both have an X. Those two. Okay, so I'm thinking about what will divide into 2x squared that will also divide into 5x. Okay, so what should that be? Uh -huh. Now, 6x and 15. What will factor out of both those? Just a 3. Okay, 2x squared. And 6x, what will come out of both of those? Okay. And then 5x and 15. Good. So, what do you have here? Okay. Good. Yeah, it's plus 5. There you go.
put up another five x and big thing. You know, I can be two x and twelve. Oh, okay. Thanks. Yeah, one. Parentheses will be x plus three. I think he's going to be watching the video. Two well, times factors of yeah, 36, six, right? so draw a line under 36. Now, the positive, the negative, what are they going to be? Both okay. positive, so I'm just going to start listing the factors. What times what is 36? Okay. What are you looking for? How do you decide what they need to add together to equal? Huh? Wow, 11. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so what's oh, yeah, happening? Okay. Awesome. Now five <laughs> top to bottom. When you're on page three, take it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What are we now, now look, if I'm going down, my blank needs to be below it. Okay. Times 12 or one times negative 12 is what? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So I know I'm going to find factors, and what is that be the sign of the larger? Yeah. Uh -huh. So you would have one times two times. And three times. Now remember, we're adding, we're combining now. So it is one plus negative 12. 
So now, uh, what, what is your first time here? Uh, so what should be with your app? Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. So now you have to go six down there. So what is my understood number in front of X? Well, and so when I go eight times six, I've got one times six. So now the sign of my largest positive. So one. So, we're doing factors of negative one times what is Okay, and we're going to have the negative So, one times six. Okay. Now, what are we trying to get them to add? What is negative one plus six? What is negative two plus three? Negative two plus three.
Make sure to let me know if you have any questions. Yes. 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 Yes.